Yo, what's poppin', everybody? It's your boy, Mr. J Hill. Uh, yeah, your camera right here. Okay. J Hill Podcast episode. Shit, I, only, I can't even say the episodes because we never know what we're going to drop. But uh, special guests in the building, uh, two special guests in the building, um, three special guests in the building. First special guest is uh, King Crab, ATL. Shout out to them. Um, second special guest, Abby Nicole. Abby Nicole. She brought that? a really close friend with her. Yes, I brought my day one. Say the name. T Kiana. 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 I mean, I don't know. So, I, I, so don't start to say. Just let me. I say was, it. Go ahead. I was close though. So I mean, <laughs> no, I know yeah, a little something. Get. A little something. Kiana J. Kiana J. In the building. And she hit me right shout, out, shout out to my gang too. T Nicole was here. Uh, yeah. so I was like, yeah, I was doing some research. I was searching. I'm like, man, I want to do something different. I never really did this because like how I do the interview. Mm-hmm. So I was like, it's kind of weird to do with mics and shit. But uh-huh. I'm like, I wanted to bring you a gift. You don't deserve no gift. I just want to let the people you know. You know what? It's okay. I will admit it. I'll say y'all I was really late. I was all over the place, but I made it here. You, you came. You look good. And I appreciate you for it's you fine. know it's bearing fine. with me. You it's gonna see it. I'll be worth it. All I right. promise. I mean, that's cool. So I wanted to get you some gifts. I'm like, yo, I don't even know what. I'm like, I'm fuck I it. Some get some seafood. Lots oh shit. Tail. Can you grab me the um the butter? Cause we gonna put the oh, butter. Oh yeah, we need there. the butter. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> um yeah. yeah, we're gonna do that and then. We gonna chop it up. Okay. So you, you know want, what this is called on YouTube when you eat on a video? So I didn't know that. I thought it was just like specifically you. you like this is a mukbang. Yeah, they say mukbang, mukbang, muk, mukbang. Muk it's all different. So things. I thought that I thought that that was like like intentional thing. I, so anytime you eat and talk, some is people that, base their content straight strictly around mukbangs, or some people just do it here and there. Like I'm just gonna eat and talk. People like it. People so anytime like that it. you eat and talk is a mukbang. Yeah, pretty much. It could be in the car. It could be anywhere. I did not know that. Yep. I did not know that. So I'm going to let ladies first. You we go got to pray before. Mm-hmm. You know what's funny? Uh, Promise you, I swear. I was like, I want to open the interview with a prayer. Oh, let's pray. One so I want you to lead the prayer. Prayer. Let me lead it? Okay. Mm-hmm. Put it on my hand. Come on. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for today. Thank you for everything that you have done. Thank you for getting me to this interview safe. I know it was I was all over the place, but thank you for giving Jay patience to deal with me. Um, I ask that you make this interview go well, and for the people watching, for them to receive it well, and for us to chop it up and have a good vibe. In your name I pray, amen. amen. Oh yeah, and thank you for the food, amen. Amen, yes sir, I like that. Yeah. Vibes, I, um, I saw that she was very spiritual. If you come from a, a, a spiritual background, mm-hmm. parents and, yeah. parents are pastors and deacons well, and, Okay, so it's in the bloodline. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely in the bloodline. So for sure, you want me to break it down for you? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so yeah, I mean, I come from a very spiritual background. My parents are Haitian. Uh, you can't do it like that. How I gotta do it? Like Whoa, just go crazy. Yeah, you gotta go like that. I'm sorry. You gotta I was gonna dip it, but nah, okay, nah, nah, I'm gonna trust nah, you. Nah, you gotta like... <laughs> He's not playing no game. Okay, put me on there. See, that's the thing, y'all. I'm used to eating Haitian food. We eat seafood, but like, no, put me not. on there. You got, you know what I'm saying? See how it's like all over the pumpkin on the pumpkin. So, fucking. okay, it's just butter? Yeah, but it's like a special butter sauce. So, like, it's not like your average. Oh, yeah, okay, so. Uh, crab this oil. what we got here, y'all. And a mukbang, you're supposed to show them. The lobster tail, corn, uh, shrimp, crab legs. Ooh. Special thank you to uh, King Crab ATL again. Thank you, King Crab ATL. But yeah, your parents are Haitian. Yes, my parents are Haitian. Mm-hmm. They um, both came to the U.S. when they was like in 1819. And then, they, you know, they was here for, they, they've been here for a minute, but very strict. I come from a religious background. My grand uncle was a pastor in New mm. York. Rest in peace to him. But yeah, very spiritual background, culture, Haitian. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. So is, you say because the first thing you said was Haitian. Is that like a, a Haitian thing? Like re- re- really spiritual? Most Haitians or? Yes, very spiritual, but also very strict. Okay. Okay. So that's where I was just like, but yes, it definitely is like a spiritual thing. Like they're very passionate about their, you know, what they believe in and stuff like that. Okay. Sure. What's the like? What's the looking? Places. I guess looking back on it, right? Because mm-hmm. their parents are so strict. What was probably the the dumbest thing that you think you got punished for, or something that you don't you really don't think you got got punished for, but they was just strict OD for that. You know what's crazy? I'm not gonna lie. I was I'm the last one, so my brothers and sisters always said that my parents let me get away with a lot. Oh. 
I feel like everything I got in trouble for was was realistic. Oh, but so my brothers, <laughs> yeah, but my brothers and sisters used to be like, "Yo, we didn't even do anything. We used to have to do this. You okay. do that." But they really, they pretty valid with everything they, you know, got in trouble for. So what you get in trouble for the most? I got in trouble for my mouth. Mm. I was just, I would just talk back, but it was, I wasn't trying to be disrespectful. I just didn't know how to really express myself mm. to my parents. So it came off like I just had a mouth. Okay. And then, you know, like I said, I'm the last child. So I'm kind of like breaking out and doing what I want to do. Okay. Whereas like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, my, my siblings was looking at me like, dang, like you really doing what you want to do. They like, had to do with like, yeah. especially, that's another thing I, I think like, cause you know, uh, I don't want to say retarded on camera, but it is what it is. Haiti is like, it's like an African descent or no? No, I'm tripping. Haiti is a French descent. French, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, well. So. But wait, it's some, but it's still can, cause. It, Haiti is like right next door to Dominican Republic. Like it's, it's, how do I explain it? Put it in the word. Because I, I feel like some, Af like a lot of Africans speak French too, don't know? Yeah. Some Africans speak French. So is Haiti in Africa or no? No. Oh, it Haiti is Haiti. Haiti is on its own, like it's right next door to. But I swear, I, listen, I don't, I'm not scared of nobody, so I ain't know. I just don't know. Just like you know. No, it's know. okay. But um, a lot of people have like different perceptions of Haiti, like because on the media, all they sometimes show is the bad stuff and voodoo and this okay. and that. So I'm not even tripping on you. Like to be honest, and shout out to my boy Carbo and um, Terry. They're Haitian, and it's crazy because they're doing Haitian skits and all this type of stuff, and it's like now people jet out, weird out. Like, that's how Haitians talk, and people are now finally hopping on the wave, don't even know that they, like, uh, you know what I mean? Like, okay, they just okay. finding out. So I really, it's, it's we, we lit. Okay. So is lit. So, I, well, so where I was going with it was, um, I know a lot of my African friends, right? They always say, my parents wanted me to be a doctor. Like, oh, they, that's a lot of Caribbean, African. Okay. Like, it'd be strict okay. like that. So that's just a... What what's your what's your nationality? Uh, African American. Okay, okay, okay. So that's what I'm, <laughs> I'm saying. So, okay, so yeah, like when you in the more of the Caribbean, you a know, lot of people say yeah, Jamaicans, Haitians. You like know, even they, they try to be artists. They be like their parents be like. Oh, let me tell you something. My dad, <laughs> my dad told me, because I was in school for nursing, I had a love for the medical medical field. Okay. But like, as I got closer, like to graduating and stuff, I'm like. I don't know if I want to do this. Like, so I went to school for a semester, and uh -huh. I told my dad I had to deal with him. I said, if I make this X amount of money, I'm dropping out. Like, I want to go to L.A. and pursue my, like, whatever. He said, if you don't take a class in my house, you got to get out of my house. Like, wow. why you? And I was like, okay. I'm leaving. Damn. And I just, um. He didn't expect me to, though. <laughs> like, because Haitians don't tell you, don't tell you, yeah, get out, I'm going to kick you out. But really, they love their kids. They're going to let their kids stay in the house for as long as they want, as long as you're not tripping and you following their rules and shit. But anyway, yeah, he was like, you got to leave. But he didn't believe I was going to do it. Mm. <laughs> Damn. So you think your, your peers was mad at because, like you said, you were only one of the only ones that was doing what you wanted to do. Who? Who you said? Was you? your, like, your siblings upset at that? Like, they was jealous, low-key? No, I don't feel like they was... They was real supportive. Okay. Like, they were every even like my dad was supportive. He didn't want me to go, but when it, they saw like, yo, she's really doing this, they was supportive, and I really loved my family for that. That's hard. That's hard. So for sure, it's butter good. That's all right. All right, who can have some more? I might need some napkins though. I was gonna say. There's some right here. Hey, let me have some. One thing I want to talk to you about for real. Mm. I'm making a mess, but I guess it's the point. Oh, the that's point. mug day. Sometimes they like for you to bite in the camera to hear you. Oh, not as well. Yeah, it'd be, it's the whole thing. So, mm -hmm. I wanted to talk to you about, uh, cause I, so I'm not sure I just give you a little hit of his up. I like to like have fun, but I also like to go deep and like really pick people's brains. Mm -hmm. So I hope you're prepared for that. Oh Lord, so, can I plead the fifth? No, 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 cause I, I want it's so many, so much people can learn from your story. Right. Um. So let's start at that. You said your pops was like, man, if you don't take a class. You get kicked out, and you moved out, you moved to LA. We all know LA is like hmm. Hollywood. It's Hollywood for a reason. You had a lot of problems in Hollywood, LA. 
I, I, it wasn't, not always. It wasn't until the end of me living there. Mm. But you didn't have a pleasant experience, though. Or what would you say? Overall, how would you say your experience was? I'm going to let you answer it. My experience was a good experience. I feel like I got to experience the good Mm -hmm. and I got to experience the bad. Mm. Uh, The good came first and then the bad started to come. But overall, like, I don't hate L.A. and it's completely F L.A. because I feel like if I was around a different situation or a different, you know, type of vibe, Mm -hmm. I would have enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. But then again, it's like, that's why I just believe in God because it's like, okay, I learned what I learned so that if I do come back here, I know how to move or if I, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So you back in Orlando now? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, that's where you're from, right? No. Okay, so I was born in Connecticut. Okay. Born in Connecticut. Um. My family uh, was living in Queens. Like, that's where my mom was living at when okay. she came from Haiti. Okay. And then she moved to Connecticut to, you know, try a different type of vibe. And then she met my father, and they waited 10 years to have me. And then, ooh, it's, all, it's, it's a lot. No, talk to me. And then um, we was in Connecticut for about, up until I was like 12, 13. Mm-hmm. And then we moved to Orlando. And I lived in Orlando. And then as soon as I graduated, I dipped to L.A. Okay, so that makes sense. Thank you for clearing it up. Cause I was looking, and I was listening. Like you said, there's not a lot of videos, and I'm like, she sounds like from New York. Like I hear an up north accent. Mm-hmm. But when you said that you moved back home, and you had said Orlando, I'm, I'm all like, over the place. Okay, okay. That's but fine. it's like one of those things where like I really feel like I really enjoyed living up north, like being around my cousins in New York. Like I really just I always would go back for the summers, mm-hmm. and obviously I left young, but it was still around me. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like. That's a lot of napkins, but I know I don't like my <laughs> I don't like my hands greasy while I'm talking on camera. You know. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. But um, yeah, like I just was always around that type of vibe. So yeah, so but I'm just everywhere. <laughs> talking about the LA experience, right? Mm-hmm. I feel like um. Can LA, they see the napkins in this shot? Okay. I feel like LA. You had some pretty down like moments in LA, like that you probably never seen before. What do you mean? Like, you know, you was probably at your lowest at times. Um, like I said, I wasn't at my lowest till I at the end of it. Like, and I was there for almost three, for well, three, going on like three years. Mm-hmm. Most of the time there, I was I was good. Right. Like, but towards the end of it is where it kind of yeah. It that's left. where I saw myself at probably a place where I never been before. Mm-hmm. I would say. Where do you think that? Came from. Cause, like, cause I like you. You speak about it on YouTube, but you don't really <laughs> like. You be playing like you. You cap. First Not of all, by, <laughs> YouTube is fucking. I hate it here. Like, <laughs> like your, your titles will say one thing. I be like, okay, get to it. Clickbait. But, yeah. So, I w- I wanted to have that conversation for sure. Cause like, I feel like it's a gray area. The gray area, but I feel like a lot of people can learn from that gray area that you don't speak about. And mm-hmm. if you and if you. Don't, if you don't mind, and if you are comfortable enough, mm. blessing me with that conversation. About I really, what, what I really want to have that conversation. I want to learn how you got through it and through what, it. what got you in it for the first part. From the first part, so what got you in this? Very okay, so like for me, like like I said, coming out of my Haitian household, like I knew for me, I want to do so much. Mm-hmm. Like I don't want to cut myself short. Like I want to do everything. I love making music. I want to get into choreography. I want to model for a brand i want to be in a movie i want to have my own businesses like you know what i'm saying which i have some right now but i want to you know think on a bigger scale so it was when i moved to la it was like i feel like it was my college years if i was in college like those years of your life where you figuring yourself out Mm -hmm. i literally went from being in high school to semester and being in a big city or like you know a really crazy city like la Mm -hmm. so when I was there, like, you know, it was cool. I I wanted to move there with my best friend. And so she we ended up not doing it, so I ended up moving with somebody I met when I visited LA. And that it was, was cool. The dominant chick or Yeah. Okay. Um but it was cool. It was all good vibes, good vibes, good vibes. But I felt like the content I was making, what I started making was beauty, hair stuff. Mm-hmm. I got bored of it. I wanted to start doing lifestyle and then I got like I, I want to be, I want to pursue my music career because being in my parents' household, I felt like I always wanted to do that, but I couldn't 
Because it, like I had to wait till I got out to really go. It was so strict. Yeah, dive into that. So I went, and I was there. It was cool. I never used to be the type of person to go out because that's not what my parents let me do. Right. So it's like you I wasn't old enough at first. Like like you said, my you friends said were still in high school. They all was going to the little clubs, parties, uh-huh. drinking, smoking, all that. Uh, mm, I was I was home. So anyway, you can take your time with the conversation too. You can take no, your time. Good. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. You can eat. No, when the boom. Take your time. Take your time. We got time. But yeah, you weren't going out like that. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't going out like that. And then, yeah, I fell out with Shorty. Whatever was that? My other friend moved in with me. So it was just like it was cool. I had it was different because I didn't have my family around me. We so you know I'm away from them, like on the other side of the country. Cool, cool, cool. We going out, we vibing, this and that. And then I realized, like, okay, I don't want to just be in this YouTube. Certainly. I want to step out more and, like, meet new people that will help me pursue. Or, you know what I'm saying, just network in different ways to where I could find just new vibes. Mm-hmm. And then I started going out more. Started going out more. COVID happened, and it was just, like, I had a blast in L.A. with COVID. For real? The whole world was was locked down when we was having a blast. That's crazy, because I, I would think the opposite in, in Los Angeles. They right? had underground stuff going on where they let people come to. It was just one club everybody would always go to, but it was the spot. You know what's crazy? I'm going to let you finish the story, but did you know that, um, damn, I wish I could like fact check this, but did you know that's how, I think, if I'm not sure, some, I'm, and, and I got to be careful with this, but uh the lgbt it was a big lgbt community out there if i'm not mistaken because somebody when you said underground i think like they were like big out there at one point like a long time ago they're like i mean this is probably like back in the day like they had a whole situation going on For real? I, yeah I'm, this is what i heard but they somebody was gonna correct me but that's what i heard like when you said underground it, it um it Just, them, yeah but whatever you said y'all was having fun out there one club. yeah having fun having fun i'm having fun and you know, I'm just peeping the vibes. Now, mm-hmm. obviously, you know, I'm going on. I'm seeing, okay, I'm, I could live here for a little bit. Like, I told myself four years. Mm-hmm. I thought it was going to be two. But then as I started living there, I'm like, okay, maybe four years. Because the beginning year, I had to figure this out this year. Like, you know, I was trying to, like, map out. So I'm trying to make legit, like, build, like, you know, good, oh, yeah. real relationships with people. And so, you know, I just peeped at the vibes in L.A. because it's so Hollywood. I've heard, like, spiritual things about L.A. I didn't have friends move there and say, uh-uh, I need to go back home because of what I'm feeling, whatever. And I would always be like, side-eye it. But then I just started to realize, like, the way people move. And I know it's weird vibes and weird people everywhere, but it's just something different about L.A., like what people try to do to be in that mix or to be what their perception of, quote-unquote, Hollywood is. And it's like... Where's y'all morals? Mm. Like, I would see, you know, just, and again, it might happen anywhere, but it was just, I don't know, it felt different. It was like, I would literally see bitches talk about, be cool with a bitch, talk about her, literally when she walk away or the next day and be back in her face and kiki, and it's like, uh uh. Mm-hmm. I don't move like that. Like, if we not fucking with people's energy, we not forcing shit. Like, we not forcing nothing, you know what I'm saying? It's just we not doing that. So, but then I, it's so clicky and it's kind of small that it's like, even if you didn't want to run into somebody you don't fuck with, you gonna run into her. And it's like, damn, you gonna beef with a bitch every time you see her, or you, or you just gonna go with it? And I didn't realize it till towards the end of my um, me being there, or even me being completely out of there. Like, damn, like I used to like this shit was rubbing off on me. And I didn't even realize it. Like, you know, like what they say, when a fruit is rotten and if it's another fruit next to it, mm-hmm. I felt like that's what was going on with me. Like, a lot of the sh- shit they was doing that wasn't cool or wasn't right, it started to just become normal. Oh, this is, this is, this is. And it's like, I felt like I just started to lose myself. Because I also was in a place where I'm like, what do I want to do? Because I want to do so much and I'm trying to do all this stuff. And my mom always told me, if you're doing a lot, you everything's gonna suffer like or if you're doing one thing and you're trying to do two things one's gonna suffer right but i always tell myself i could do it all so question mm-hmm. what was the you don't have to say no names or nothing like that but what was like the final story that really because you said you, you was in the depressed state almost like you was having- so first it started with me 
questioning what I wanted to do or what what was my purpose. Like I started going through a phase like, what do I want to do? Like, what do I want to focus on? Mm -hmm. I don't know what I want to do or what I want to take on. And it kind of took me in an area where I stopped doing YouTube videos because I was over it. I don't like to come on camera if it's forced. Mm -hmm. My followers really appreciate the fact that I'm real and raw with them. So when I wasn't feeling it, I just didn't pick up the camera. And that already that is when it started to make me question myself or like, yo, am I really like, no, 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 am I doing the right thing or whatever? And then that turned into just other stuff because being in LA, like, you know, I would, especially like if my family, they coming out to LA, they want to pursue something, I'm going to look out. Like, I would want someone to do it. For me, what I would do for them, you know what I'm saying? So, I had a lot of responsibilities that weren't just me. I was, you know, looking out for people. Like what? What you mean by looking out? I'm not gonna get too deep in, into it, but why not? No, you don't have to say no names, but that's the whole point. It's not of even it. about that, cause it's not even about that. I just don't want to get too deep into it. That's fine. What? But I was just, you know, looking out for a lot of people, and it was like I felt like everybody was taking, 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 taking from me because I always had it under control. I always figured it out, or I was always there. Where it's like they sucked, I feel like I was sucked to dry and was expected to show up for everybody, but I needed the same, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that kind of took me in a situation and it was just like, I felt like it was just a lot on my shoulders and I just felt myself getting like a darker, 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 darker place. But I don't even wanna, to be honest, we talk about this story, but we about to wrap it up right here because to be honest, I got through it. And you know, it's crazy, I'm happy I went through that early in LA because now I know I'll never let myself get there again. You know what I mean? It was just, mm -mm. Can't, no, I, I, I found myself tolerating stuff I wouldn't tolerate. Just all around, just, it was just, I wasn't me. So I, I asked that because in order to first understand how you got through something, we gotta understand what it was, right? Because there's so many, I feel like. I'm gonna take a break from the food. I wanna take a shot. No, do your thing. I open it for you. Okay. You gotta pour your own poison though, so uh. it's fine. Um, and if you're done, you can just push it to the back. Yeah, I'm probably gonna come back in later. I feel like you got me eating now, so. I uh, know. Go ahead, eat. But I said, I said to say, what I was saying was, I feel like you're not the only one that go through that. I feel like even everybody in this room have their times where it's like, man, mm -hmm. I just felt like I wanted to quit. Mm -hmm. And on my show, I like to talk to people about the things that they go through, and I know you uncomfortable. Maybe later on, but whatever. What you mean, uncomfortable what? Talking about certain things, and that's okay. But I know us sharing our story can be so motivational to so many other people, right? Mm -hmm. Us sharing the things that we went through and how we got through it can be, shit, honestly, sometimes can be the very next thing that saves somebody else's lives, right? Right, right, like right. Like you right, said, right. like, it was times you had suicidal thoughts, and um, yeah. it, might, it might be somebody watching this and seeing exactly what you went through and understanding, like, damn, I didn't know it was like that. That's the same thing I'm going through. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? That's why I have these conversations because I feel like it can really help so many people. I feel like, you know, a lot of times we have our stories and we, we really do people a disservice by keeping them to ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. But, um, right. I mean, again, I'm not forcing it though. No, so it's not. Be, I don't have a problem talking about it. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't have a problem talking about it. Um, to be honest, I, the, the reason why I really felt like I got through it too is because I have a praying family. Mm hmm. Like, mama on her knees about me in L.A. I'm so far. You know what I'm saying? I'm the last child. I'm a, I'm a girl. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll call my mom forgetting the time difference, like, at a 9 at night, and it would be, like, 12, 1 over here, and she'd be like, uh, uh, what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong? Don't worry me. Like, always praying, just, you know, praying, 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 and I feel like that's another thing because when I was getting there and I got to a point where I was like, Mom, S.O.S., she got on that flight, she came there, and she got me out of there. Yeah. She was like, you need to get out of this. So what was, like, the, uh, what was your wildest experience, like, crazy experience that you had in, in L.A. that turned you off? Wildest or crazy experience? Something that was like, what the fuck? I can't believe this. Like, Oh, really like, the parties. Like, stuff that would be going on. Like, well, we hear things like people be gay and shit, but... No, it, I ain't say nothing about that, but it'd be like, okay, pull up here, catch a vibe. Everybody get in the pool naked, huh? Wait, what? That <laughs> That's a real thing? Not I. <laughs> Y'all be having to sign, like, NDAs and shit? Mm-mm. They'll try to... They'll take your phone at some places, but... Usually, I'm not gonna lie, I was with the people that was... 
good, so okay. I didn't ever have to like really give up because I was like, it was like she good. Yeah, I like it's a weird place. Man. Yeah, it's it's different. I really enjoyed it because of the views. When you look outside, you see mountains and in the hills. Like it's a nice experience, but yeah, it'd be a lot. Top I, five cities that uh, just from top to bottom that you that you would want to live in because I you said you want to live in Miami you love Atlanta but if you had to give me top five so, cities in the in, in the country when I, would it be? when I was younger it was I thought I was gonna do LA first Atlanta and then Miami mm -hmm. and I think that's what's gonna happen but now Houston is in is in the mix, mix. now mm -hmm. um especially because of her ass over oh, there she in Houston? yeah she lives in Houston I went to go out there um this year to visit or to pop up to my friend Nick's birthday and I was with Kiana. And boy, I went to Houston a couple times during COVID. It was mm mm. But I went with Kiana. Kiana took me to probably like ten different clubs in five to six days. Oh, I'm Kiana like Mixy. Nah, she, mixy. she just be got she got that motion. She outside. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kiana don't that. fucking play. Like my friend had me everywhere. We was good everywhere we went. She be outside. She in the mix. It was good. It was just, so now top five cities. Top five cities. In the US. In the US. Definitely. If I'm trying to change my dream, top five cities. You gotta do New York, Atlanta, mm -hmm. LA, mm -hmm. Miami, mm -hmm. and Houston. Oof. Jeez, you know, see, I'm from, I'm from Baltimore, so a lot of people are starting to say D.C. is like that now. I've a never of, been to D.C. A lot of people are starting to say, like, D.C. is the spot you want to go. For real? Yeah. You got to visit it. It's like, you know how they say Atlanta, Black Hollywood? Mm -hmm. D.C. is probably like, they call it Chocolate City for a reason. It's like that, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I'm not going to lie. I haven't heard nothing about nah, it. Nah, it's, it's like that, for sure. Yo, can Damn, you see we got to see. In the you got to get booked in D.C. or something. Nah, for sure. It's like that. Um, you can. Uh, I'm putting on my lip gloss. Uh, Go ahead. Please, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, okay. So you moved back home. Mm -hmm. How is life going now? Like, how, like it's. I'm barely there. I'm traveling all the time. Mm. Like all the time. You could just. I'm gonna throw it in the trash. Put it on the floor, I guess. Oh, okay. There's a trash right there. Yeah, just put it on the floor right. or something. Yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm never there. I'm always traveling, always, always traveling. And it's like, I'm barely ever there. So it don't even feel like I'm home, but I do really like it because it makes me, I'm able to regroup when I do go there. Mm. Oh, I need it. it. <laughs> it's yeah. like, okay, I get to go home, be around my family, be around my, like, I get to feel grounded. T, you want some? Okay. And I got some. Ooh. Oh, come on, man. I'm doing too much. I'm going to slide this to you, Kiana. Okay. Um, yeah. You, got, you want this butter in the shop? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we we done. <laughs> yeah, okay. y'all. That was our mukbang. Thank y'all. <laughs> well, let's get into this conversation. For All right. Real. Come on. Don't be scared to talk to me, though. I'm not. All right. I so, seem scared of something. No, I don't know. I mean, you seem a little reserved. Like, you know, people have things going on that I want everybody to know. I'm trying to dig. You trying to dig. Yeah, that's uh, the whole point of the interview. Here's my thing. You know, not... everything you told me I heard on YouTube. Everything. Okay, so what is it? Oh, you want to hear something else? See, the thing is, here's my thing. She do have one now. But what? she had one that I wanted to talk about. I want to know what happened with that. But go ahead. What? I'm listening to you. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, Lord. So, this is, can I, can I give you my... My stranger perspective. Is okay, okay, go ahead, go ahead. So I was looking at it and I'm like, you know, of course you had the friendship things and it, it looked like it hurt, right? You had a lot of people that you thought was close to you that just wasn't. You feel me? They probably was using you for things. Y'all probably was using each other. And like you said, the energy is off, right? Mm -hmm. For me, that's what I thought. But like at the end of the day, I feel like as humans, like when you're in a relationship, you can go through outside things and you're all right. But once your relationship goes south, it's just like you be fucked up. So I just assumed I'm like maybe she broke up with a boyfriend. It just was like no, that was part of it. I had somebody I was um with during the time, and I felt like because that was that's where I messed up. I shouldn't have been dealing with somebody while I was already going through something within myself. Mm. And that's something I just had to gain wisdom on and learn as a woman. Like you need to be good in yourself first before you ever try to 
deal with somebody, you know what I'm saying, or try to be in a relationship with somebody because it's like it's you're broken or you're going through what you're going through. It's not their job to fix you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now it's different if you're in a relationship already and then you're going through something with that partner. But it's like if I'm going through what I'm going through, I need to fix that first. And I feel like going into that messed me up because he was cool. But I feel like me just being messed up, like, kind of played a lot into, but like... You, you know, that's why, I like, <laughs> as crazy as it sounds, that be a big part, a big reason why we go into things, though. Like, because that's, it feels safe. Like, we hurt, we going through something, we find yeah, somebody that, that But that's like, what, that's how I went into it, exactly mm. what you're saying. It was definitely one of those things where I was like, okay, cool, you know what I'm saying? It might help me, but then it didn't. Mm. It really didn't. Damn. Because I'm always a relationship person. Like, I would rather be in a relationship, but with the type of work, like, you know, how I move, the career I'm in, you know, and stuff like that. It's I need to focus on myself. Like, especially with what I want to do. I want to have Abby Nicole's season. Like, be by myself, single, just focusing on me and doing what I got to do for me. I've always been in a relationship. We're going to go everywhere with this interview. We're going we're gonna to get back to the deep shit. Okay. Just curious. What made, like, why music? Like, I feel like I just, there's so many other things. No, yeah, I know it's so many other things, but I don't know. I'm just, I've always been that girl. I like to perform. Like, mm. I used to cheer. Like, and I used to be cheer captain, call them the cheers. Like, I just love, I've always loved that. I was in a choir, solos. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it was just, and then my my family, music too, but gospel. Mm. Um, My brother's rap, my cousin rap. It's, it was always around me. And I'm just like. I've always had like a lit personality and I feel like I can express myself through my music. You know what I mean? And it just feel good. Like, I don't know. It feel good. Can I, I ask you like a question? And I feel like I see a lot of people who like do YouTube or like who were good at something else initially. Like you might be hair, mm-hmm. YouTube, whatever. And they switch be, over. And they get into music. But what I see, right, this is from my perspective, people don't never... I don't see them take the music as serious as they took that first passion. Mm-hmm. Like if you go, if you go down, um, for example, I was talking to a, the guy Cliff, right? Mm-hmm. Cliff is a uh, what? What's wrong? You want to take a shot? Yeah, go ahead. I'm you with got, it. You got it. Yeah, okay. I'm down. Come on. So I was talking to the guy Cliff. He was really lit hairstylist, right? He said he's doing music now, but if you go down his page, it's a lot of hair shit. Same with you. I feel yeah. like okay. you say you want to do let's music. Let's tap in, let's tap in, let's tap in. I, I go down your page and it's mm-hmm. just a bunch of lifestyle stuff. You get what I'm saying? Right. And it's like, are you, why do you think people don't put their self out there when they really want to, if they say they want to do music, is it something that you're scared of? Is it you scared that people won't take you as well? Or so, be I'm honest say, with me. No, I'm going to say something. And I want to say a big shout out to DDG because he, I feel like, and Queen Nigel, I feel like they successfully did YouTube and transitioned over. But see, the difference I would say with me and them is they're so much bigger when they transferred over. Mm. I feel like I'm transferring I'm transferring over a little earlier. So it's like when you the thing about YouTube is if you gain a fan base and you really make them fuck with you, they're gonna do, they're gonna support you with whatever, whatever. you do. Facts. So for me, it's like I'm still on the rise and on the come up of being as big as I could be. So the transition is a little bit harder. And then also, not only that, <clears throat> I'm a boss bitch funding this by myself. You get what I'm saying? I'm doing this, real shit, I'm, I'm paying for everything, I'm doing this all by myself. What pays me? YouTube and lifestyle and stuff like that. But what do I really wanna do? Pursue my music and that. But it's like, I would rather be in the studio all day when I'm editing or when I'm planning content. But for now, I gotta bounce back and forth, but my focus, like my main focus is to really, really keep pushing my music. I'm about to drop soon. And I'm really excited. This is my first drop since I took a break from it. And I feel like everybody's just waiting to hear. Because I really get good feedback on my music. You leave a friend? Okay, I'll text you. Can you give me some water, please? Yeah, I got you. Thank you. I don't want to uh, chase this Okay, wood. thank you, baby. You're Juice. Oh, yeah. Yo, have a good night. Like, likewise. Uh, you can go that way. Cause I, I don't know, you gotta tell you to talk, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so... 
I know I even said that myself, like, you know, on my page, I have artists in my bio. I have, you know, some freestyles and stuff or remixes that I do, but it needs to give more artists. And, you know, that's what I'm really trying to do right now. I feel like I needed some time to be grounded around my family, too, with what I went through mm -hmm. to find myself again. You know what I mean? And I feel like now that I'm feeling 100 percent, it's time to really push and do what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? Which is really tap into my music. So when you say what you went through, like, honestly, like. Because, again, I feel like you... You don't know what I'm... I went through... Okay, so I felt like I lost my... I, I wasn't inspired. Mm -hmm. I felt like... YouTube started to feel like a job because I had a lot of responsibilities when it used to be something fun. Mm. So then when it started to feel like work, it was just like, bro, I don't feel like doing this. But when I used to have, you know, fun, switch my wigs, do this and that, and it felt like just something I would do. It was cool. So it started, started to lose that love for it. And it was also messing with me, like, fucking with my mental because... I need to love this. This pays my bills. Mm. This is how I'm living in California. <clears throat> Freshly turning 20, 18, uh, 19 turning 20, not knowing what I'm doing. I don't know nothing about nothing, adulting, none of that. I just didn't want to be, I didn't want to be going to school. I know I wanted to pursue, so I just left. Mm. I didn't even leave with the right of money, amount of money, I feel like, now that I know what I know now. It's like, what the fuck was you thinking? Like, So now it's like, damn, trying to figure out what I want to do, and I'm like, Okay, I'm not working. I don't feel like taking pictures. I'm not turning in my work. Like, you know what I'm saying? So like, everything's just declining, declining, declining. I thought I was gonna go on a two week break. It turned into four months. Damn. And I didn't even know and realize that I'm like, oh my God, it's July and I haven't been consistent. Like, you talking about somebody who used to post all the time, consistently, consistently, consistently. Too much, I felt like, to just, not at all. How do you, how do you stay motivated now that looking back on it, right? Because of course, you had to, you had a lot of things you was dealing with a lot of people, a lot of burden on your shoulders that you had to take care of. Mm -hmm. So you felt like you had to do the YouTube instead of wanting to do it. Yeah, that's how it started to feel because again, I wanted to be beyond. Right. And so, even early into me, no, before I moved to LA, I was in the studio. Mm. So like, close to me moving, I used to go to the studio in Orlando. I knew Breed Studios, and I used to record with this engineer. He was dope. But that was literally, I was, I didn't know what I was doing in the studio. I just wanted to know I wanted to make music. I'm singing in there. I feel like my voice didn't even develop as, like, what I could do now then. Um, I would just execute things. But anyway, before I moved to L.A., I tapped into my music. I'm like, okay, now it's my time to do it, and I started to. But then I felt like I just wanted to go through life because I didn't want my music to just not make sense. You know, I'm just starting. I said, I want to go through shit as a woman. So right. when I'm rapping about stuff, it makes sense. Because so, I got to tap into it later. Than I live. What I want to ask you is, looking back on it, right, when you was going through them things and you're like, man, I'm not recording, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's really hard on you. I know you say your family was praying for you, right? Mm -hmm. But what were some things that you did intentionally or that you would do intentionally looking back on it to get out of those those hard times? I was just... In a gray area, like, at the time, my friend was like, <clears throat> I haven't seen you pray in a minute. Because mm, yeah, yeah. usually, like, growing up Sunday, church Sunday, going to church every Sunday, okay, you're not missing a Sunday. My parents let me miss school before they make me miss church, <laughs> okay? Um, so when COVID happened, I used to go to church in L.A. It was called One, One Church L.A. I think it was T.D. Jake's daughter church. Or, um, and I used to go there, and I started going there because I'm like, okay, I need to still be grounded here, like keep you, go to church. And then COVID, they got locked down. So that meant no more church. <clears throat> so I tried to watch um, my pastor from Orlando, um, Ty Tribbett. He do like online streaming services. I would try to watch every Sunday, but it wasn't the same. Like, mm -hmm. so I just felt like slowly just disconnected from my spiritual, you know, what I would do. And then again, just with the lifestyle of LA, I was doing YouTube, wake up, film YouTube videos, 7 a.m., edit them, go out at night, party, network, come back home late, do it again, 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 do it again. And I just didn't, I just lost the connection I felt like with. Do you feel <laughs> like, uh, in a sense, like you had to like grow up way before you was ready? Cause that sounds like a yeah. lot. Yeah, I feel like I did, but Cause even college, we still young. Yeah, like, we, we super young. Yeah, because I even keep in contact with some people that my friends that are in college, and it's like 
they're doing their thing and I'm like you're doing great for what you're doing like you know what I mean like I'm like I know I'm out here doing something completely different but we're on two different things like you're doing great mm. you know and I like you said like I felt like I had to because I left that nest basically without knowing nothing I had to figure it all out I'm like oh damn I ain't no business like this like I literally <laughs> went from just not having to worry about nothing and now I have all these and then you want to lay it oh my it's expensive God. as hell bro well that's the only reason why I moved in with a roommate at first but then Shit, you had one. I be hearing stories about like four or five people be rooming in one bedroom. I be hearing. I looked out for people, okay? It was to the point where I even had like people stay at my crib and I let them, you know, like people will want to sleep on your couch or like I let them do that because it's like, yo, we all trying to get it. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I, I want you to win. But uh, you can't do that. What was the longest you let somebody stay with you that wasn't really staying with you? A month. That's barely, not- barely. It didn't even hit a month. It was like on the cusp. Mm. Of hitting a month, and <laughs> uh-uh. <laughs> uh-uh. saying no is okay, and I had to learn that. Facts. Mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of people um, don't understand the power of no. No, I'm over. I'm gonna rewind it. I feel like a lot of people don't understand the power and yes, and I say that because mm. it's like people are so used to getting a yes that when somebody says no, it hurt their feelings so much, and it's like why. Let me tell you, that word will start some problem. But, yeah, for sure. Like, <laughs> I'm just, I just, it just pondered on me a little bit. But it's it like, like it was something that triggered you. Like, it's not even that when you say no, too, though. It's when you doing, you doing, you doing for people. And it's like, okay, you expecting your, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just do. Yeah. Damn, that's crazy. So, what would you think? Like, so, what would you want? Because we was, before we got on, we was like, we want to sit down and have a conversation. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to ask you this. What do you want the people to to know about you? Like, if, if, if I had to give you a notepad and you gave me a list of things to talk about, right, mm-hmm. what would be, like, five of the main things that you want the people to like, take from you when you speak? Um, There's a lot of misconceptions of me, too, on social media, back with, like, the YouTube stuff. And it's like, I feel like, because so early in my career, I got into whatever mess I got into, it like made people be like, just, eh. but it's like, m- motherfuckers ain't really get to give me a chance. Like, you know how they be trying to cancel somebody so quick. Like, facts. dang, nah, like, facts. y'all don't even know me. Y'all just go based off of this, and it's just like, okay, now, fuck her. But. What was those things, though? Um, it was. I know a, the diamond situation. That's the only thing I, I know. It was a situation that I had way, 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 way back. It's not, I don't want to go too deep into it because it's not, it's just, I don't want to talk about it. You know what I'm saying? But it was one of those things where, again, it was early in my career and it was, I had to learn. You know what I'm saying? And with social media too, it's like, you know, damn, if you do this, they going to get, you do this. It's just one of those things where you just got to stay true. So those five things going back into that would be that like, yo, like, I really just, Love, love energy, good vibes. You know what I'm saying? I'm a person that want to see everybody win. You know what I'm saying? I want to take care of my people. I'm Haitian. I want to put us Haitian people on the map. You know what I'm saying? And I listed a few. <laughs> um, yeah, you said one. like one or two. You wanted, uh, you I'm love a, good energy. Mm-hmm. You want to put your people on the map. Um, I really want to just, I don't know, like, I'm real humble. My my fans, like to be honest, I gotta say, like shout out to my supporters, cause they be writing me messages, and you know what I'm saying, that really be pushing me through. And I really just wanna, I don't know what the word I wanna use. What's the word I wanna use? Ooh, this Appreciate. Drink getting, yeah, this drink getting to me. I mean, yo, what is that? It's uh, Terramana. Yeah, this shit cool. Ooh, this I'm gonna cool. have to stop. <laughs> nah, that's shit cool. <laughs> I'm kidding. You wanna, uh, you wanna sh- give your, show your gratitude, your appreciation for your yeah. supporters. Understandable. Um, I already said take care of my people, but I really wanna show my family, like, you know what I'm saying, that, you know, like, you don't have to go with what the normal is. Like, you could really do this, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Um, and just really show the people, like you said, what I'm going through could change them or what. You know what I'm saying? Talking, and we, you know, we gonna get deep, whatever, we'll get deep. Get please, deep. please. He's like, I mean, deep right now. That, you know, at the end of the day, like you said, that I'm just, I just wanna be that person that people could look at and be like, yo, like, she really 
did that shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause everything I'm doing is on my own. Mm -hmm. It's okay to go out there and do what you gotta do. Just be inspirational, you know? Mm -hmm. how, how do you feel like, you, I know your family love you, but mm -hmm. do you feel like they supported you like you wish they would've? So, I wish they would've supported a little more. Mm. But I gotta say my sister, that's my num that's my person. My sister has always, if anybody has been my biggest fan, it's my sister. Like, she's the one who made me, be, like, she don't tell me what to do. She'll give me advice and let me make my decisions or she'll hear what I have to say, give me her advice, I choose what I choose. And no matter what it has been, she's always been my number one. I feel like she's also a, another reason why I am who I am or I got through what I got through because she would be in my ear like, no, you got this, no, you're good, no. We spoke about like your relationship status and stuff like mm -hmm. that, but knowing that about you, right? Like your sister being that person for you, that one, and you, like you said, she never really told you what to do. How does that, you receiving that love and, and it, it feeling so good from her affect your, your love life, right? Like how, how does that affect when you're dealing with oh, a guy? For sure, when, not only my sister, my family, when I'm dealing with a guy, I think, is my sister gonna like him? Not even that though, but like, you know, sometimes men can be like, you should do this, or how, like, how do you take that love when like they when, don't? When she give me advice about a relationship? No, not her, but like your your relationship. Like, like I don't know, let's say you're in a relationship and you're, and you're are you with guys that are like, cause you know, they say men can be sometimes controlling. Mm -hmm. Like, do you, is that something that, that, that stirs you away? Is that something that's like a super no? Because you, like you said, your sister is somebody that never tells you what to do. She just give, she lets you make your decisions. Oh, like how does my it. relationship with her affect who I deal with? Your love language, I guess. My love language. Yeah, like how, how, how did, what type of guys do you attract to? Do you see yourself attracted to? And, and are those guys that you're attracted to the guys that you really think is for you? That's a good question. I feel like, oh, that's a good question. Yeah, you trying to get, <laughs> pick my brain. The guys I'm attracted to, I'm, okay, so, <laughs> damn, I'm about to answer this question because it's like, it could go so many ways. I feel like the guys I'm probably attracted to or like probably dealing with right now is probably what's, What's what you said? What's best for you? What's best for me? So why do you think you you pick them? Because it's what I'm around. Mm. It's what I'm around. But that's why I'm trying to tell you I'm around it right now because I'm really tapping into this industry. My you know what I want to do and it's like okay yeah I'm gonna be single and I'm gonna just focus on me and do what I gotta do and wait till I you know what I'm saying or just go what I what I I like. I don't know though, cause then again, I'm really young and I feel like I haven't really dated enough. So it's like, who knows? What if th this could work? But for me, I like, it's my father too. I, I, I'm used to what I see in the house. So when, like for example, <laughs> I think I was dealing with, we, I was driving and I said, and one day he was like, I don't want to drive. My daddy always drive my mama. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or my sisters, she taught me, you know what I'm saying? So the nigga wanted to argue about driving and i'm like hey, what? like <laughs> try this fucking car so i could be queen in the front seat no i don't mind driving here and there but it's like opening the door like stuff like that like it's like and then you meet some people and it's like they're not doing that and it's like so you think that men should drive all the time i don't think they sh should drive all the time but if i don't want to drive babe please drive mm. like if obviously if something's wrong and he can't drive i'll drive or if i feel like driving i'll drive but i feel like Drive all the time. Why not? <laughs> I'm supposed to be in the front doing this. For real? <laughs> oh my. So wait, this is really a thing? Like, so women think that driving is a man thing. Not everybody thinks that because I put up a poll on my story because I wanted to tap in my followers. Like, y'all tell me. I said, should a woman, should a man drive all the time? And a lot of them was like, yes, I want to be queen in the front seat. And then a lot of them was like, no, both should drive. And I'm just like, okay, well, you're entitled to your own opinion, but I ain't gonna be in the front seat like this. Mm. You're either gonna be with it or you're not. Oh, wow. Jeez. <laughs> so that's a deal breaker for you? Like, if a man don't <laughs> like driving? It, a relationship is all about compromise. So it's like, if if it's all the things in the relationship make sense and he don't wanna drive, okay, I'll deal with he don't wanna drive. <laughs> but if it's lacking in other areas and you don't wanna drive, oh, no. And no. Mm -mm. That's crazy. That's insane. 
Like this. I'm not about to put it on my checklist. Like, oh, do he drive? Yeah. It like, sounds like I ain't gonna lie. It sounds no. like, sound like that's something that's on your checklist. Like, if I can't be in, in the front doing like this or whatever <laughs> I want to do, then nah, you, I can't get with you. That sounds like that. No, it just feels good in the passenger seat. It just feels good. That's crazy. What do you think about that? I, I don't think nothing about it. I'm gonna use it for a clickbait though, but I don't think nothing about it, honestly. Cause, but it's the fact that both of y'all said it is like, yeah. Clearly, people think I have no, I have like me, I really don't care. But what I will say is, if I always drive and I'm like, yo, just drive for me, like I would want you to drive. But like, but if I said I didn't want to, would you trip? If I always drive, yeah. You would trip. Yeah, because if I, if I all like like you said, relationship is about compromise. Mm -hmm. If I'm always driving. And it's one time I don't want to drive, and you don't want to drive. It's like, yeah, bro, come yeah. on, dog. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. yeah I but I did trip. drive, though, in that specific situation. I did drive a lot, but I just didn't like the fact that we was literally arguing about driving. Like, we real. Like, it's one thing, like, you you say, damn, why you want to drive? And then it's done, it's done. All right, babe, I'm going to drive. But we're literally arguing, like, hard down arguing about it. And now it's a problem. Now we're not talking for the rest of the day over driving. Or maybe... You could have just drove and it wouldn't have been an argument. I know, but it was like I wasn't trying to argue. I just and he wasn't trying to drive. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, so I mean, shit. Like you got a point there. But whatever. I don't that. mind driving. I'm gonna see. We gonna we I'm, I, we gonna see if if that's the thing or not. So um, <laughs> yo, I feel like it's so much. It's still so, it's still it's so, so much more. Okay, so come much, on. It's so much. It's okay. so mysterious. It's like I'm mysterious. No, not I'm not like it's like it's so much. I'm not spilling everything. Yeah, it's like I so much to know about you. I feel like I'm not getting it. Like it's so many things that I feel like you got going on or, or that you've been through that you mm. can teach us and help us. It's just like nah, I don't want to talk about that. I ain't getting it. You want to know why? Because I just feel like certain things don't deserve my energy anymore. Mm. In the time that I probably should have talked about it, like let's say if we sat down fresh when I left LA, when I was ooh, I was mad and I wanted to talk my shit. You know what I'm saying? Now it's been, I've been, I haven't been to LA since November. So it's been so long. Mm -hmm. So it's just like now when I talk about the situation, it's just like, you know? I, I'm glad, I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that. It's not like, at the, I'm not gonna lie, at the time when it was fresh, I probably would have name driving me messy. We don't have to name drop, we don't have to No, I know, but I'm saying, I'm trying to tell you my mindset. Well, I was probably furious and wanted to, but like now I'm just so past it that it's just like, if I talk about it, I'll talk about it in my music. In my, they be knowing So when I talk about it. Is it something that you don't, is it something that's your past or is it something that you're scared to revisit? I'm not scared to revisit. Cause mm -hmm. I feel like that can be a coping mechanism. A, a mechanism. Cause I feel like if we're, like if, if somebody is truly over something, they're able to speak on it and say, you know what? It was times where I went through this and I got through it because da 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 da. But a lot of times like if you like, don't want to revisit something it's like man nah, i don't even want to bring that up it's, it's not i don't want to revisit it because it's a trigger i'm gonna tell you that right now i'm looking in the camera <laughs> it's just that certain people i'm not speaking on them mm. i'm not giving them no time i did not get on this podcast to speak about you this is like <laughs> about me this is me time this is me time, baby. <laughs> like, nice. like that. you had me when you had me you're you don't even exist to me anymore and it's like i don't want to shed light on something that yeah, you know it's crazy because people can learn a lot about that though. Like I feel like in a world full of what we always talking about, uh, fucking self love and things mm -hmm. like that. Like that's big. A lot of people don't understand how to cherish themselves. Mm -hmm. Right? We always say you got. And I didn't know how to either. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I was always a yes, yes, yes. I got you. I got you. I'm a <clears throat> but then I had to learn. Mm -mm. You gotta love yourself first. So what? So I think I heard this question before. What? What does um? What does no mean to you? Now that you know about how to say no and what it in the power of it what what does no actually mean to you what do you mean like dig a little deeper like it's for you to dig deep so the power so for example for me right no means power to me and i'll tell you why it means power to me because it, it shows self-love one and it shows self-love being able to understand that I can put myself first and being okay with that. It was times where I wasn't okay with saying no to somebody because of how they would look at me. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So and that's a perfect that's a perfect way to just get me to talk on that real quick. Yeah, I, I don't know if I always want to keep good energy. Mm -hmm. I hate weird vibes. I hate I just don't like it. So it's like if I could be the mediator or if I could just help it to be good. I'm gonna do it. Or if this is gonna really take the stress off the situation, fuck it, I'll do it. Everything but drive, but. 
<laughs> I'm trying to think. Did I drive that day? No, but it's I can't okay. remember. It's okay. I'm joking. No, but, but I'm really thinking like, did I okay. drive that day? Because I'm about to be like, I did drive that day anyway. You know, but no, but like for real, like I really just want to make things cool. So, like you said, when I start to say no, because it turned into that before, it was like, okay, all right now, all right now, and I was like, nah, you okay? You really gotta step up. Like, no, you gotta do what you gotta do. Like when I started being stern or saying no. People don't like that though when you always say yes, 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 because it's like, hold on, you switching up. Mm -hmm. Truth is, I always felt like this, but I was being cool. And now I got the strength to say no. Now I got the strength to say no, and you taking advantage. Mm. So it's like very powerful no. Yo, how is it? Uh, you got a lot of followers on Instagram, mm -hmm. very attractive. YouTube is popping. How is it? You're in the industry. How is it maneuvering through the industry, both YouTube and music? And it's like predominantly male dominated, Ooh. like being a woman. How is that? And I know I'm only experiencing the very beginning stages of it because I know there's, sorry, make sure my mama good. I know there's very beginning stages. Of, I'm in the very beginning stages of it, but it's so hard because growing up, like in being in high school, I always used to have guy friends. Like I used to be cool with the bros. Like they would come home with me after like, when I was on track, after track practice, my mama would order us pizza, be cool. But then, like, in the industry, I try to do that, and it's just, like, always, it got to be. Our turn of the motor. Always. Uh, and it's, like, I'm really just trying to be cool first. Mm. I feel like I really believe in strong relationships or genuine and energy, and I really like to tap in with someone and just feel you as a person before we even go anywhere to that. So it just be like, damn, I'm trying to work, and you just want to do this. And it's just, like. Did you ever feel pressure to, like, I don't know, be more than what you wanted to be with somebody just because of an opportunity? Mm -mm. Mm mm I will say this, and I'm proud of myself. I ain't never did nothing for opportunity because no T, no shade. Well, not, not saying you did anything, but did you, ever, did you ever felt like it was a hard decision or pressure because, mm -mm. no, that's good. Because I knew, like, if I wanted to go that route, trust and believe, I would have been way bigger in it. But I just, no, I already, I already knew, like, I'm happy I had that. Still, and when I was there, I was still grounded and had more. So it's just like, no, I'm not doing that. I don't gotta mm. think twice. No, mm. I'm not doing that. That's good. So what? What are some of what are some of the things that you that you're going through, both YouTube industry and music industry, that that you don't like? Besides, I guess like guys always wanting something from you. Let's say if uh, somebody got money, they might not be in the industry or have a high social status, but because they got money, they feel like they can take advantage or just they're entitled to certain stuff. I've seen that a lot, and it's just like. Listen, just because you got this, you know about the, we bleed the same blood. So let's, off the, the series of topics, right? Um, let's get into some fun. Mm -hmm. Give me top five YouTubers right now. Top five. Black YouTubers. Why do you feel like you got to ask me so much about YouTube? Because you. I know. I just, I've been in the game so long. I'm just so ready to really. So, so I'm gonna ask you something else about me okay, too. Yeah, yeah, top, yeah. top five uh, YouTubers, just in general, who yeah, I yeah. Top five. To be honest, you know what's crazy? I'm not gonna lie. Now that I'm in the industry, I don't really watch YouTube like that no more. Mm. Now that I'm in it, who was somebody that you looked up to though? I'm pretty sure some people that you mirrored your, your style off, or well, not even mirrored, just just inspired. Yeah, inspiration. Um, it was definitely. Cause the thing is, the thing is, when I started doing YouTube, it was one, one YouTuber that I really used to watch a lot, Aaliyah J. She, she, she was just at the time when I was like, okay, yeah, she put me on to like, okay, this I do this, this I do that. She was someone I really used to watch real heavy, and then I used to just watch a flood of a lot of just beauty. The list goes on, but then like I told you, I started to get. Oh, Kennedy Simone, that's my friend. Shout mm -hmm. out to Kennedy. Um, Aaliyah's face, that they're coming to me now. Aaliyah's face. These are all more so beauty okay. influencers. And then I met the vlogger and lifestyles and DDG. Really respect DDG. I ain't watch all of his content, but I messed with him as a person, like in his hustle. Um, and definitely my girl Kiana J. Mm. She and I and all the people that I mentioned, I 
except for Aaliyah J, I met everybody else and it was cool. But Kiana J, I'm right here with her all the time, and I just see the behind the scenes. And even to this day, she okay, she really be doing her shit. Top five female rappers. Top five female rappers: Nicki Minaj. Mm -hmm. For sure, Nicki Minaj. I really like Lakia. Mm. Really love Lakia. Mm -hmm. Lotto. Mm -hmm. Cardi B. Mm -hmm. Who would be my number five? I, it's a few that I would put in my number five. But let me see Nicki Minaj, Lakia, Lotto, Cardi B. Megan Thee Stallion. Okay, so and I, what's the five? Nicki Minaj. Uh huh. Lotto. Uh huh. Lakia, Cardi B. Megan, Megan Thee Stallion. Stallion. Okay. Okay. All right. So when you first started, right? I feel like um you said that Cardi B had posted you. Yes. Your outfit or something like that. Yeah, way 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 back, Cardi B. Um, I was listening to her mixtape back in high school and I really loved it. And when I had my prom season come around. I did, I had my sister record a video of us just, you know, in a prom dress, and I had her song playing in the background. And by the end of the night, or the next morning, my phone was just going off, 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 off. And she had posted it on her page, and it was just going crazy, like, oh my God, that prom dress is so cute, da, 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 da. And at the time, I was like ending high school, it was after prom, and I was like, I wasn't doing YouTube heavy no more. And then I was like, damn, like, this is getting a lot of traction. Everybody want to know where my dress from, what I'm doing, what I'm doing. They make a YouTube video about it, and it kind of sparked me to do YouTube again. And when I tell you that video went viral, that was the first video that got me paid. Like, that was the video that, like, got me monetized on YouTube, and it got me, like, the most traction. Like, the mo that was, like, the, mo the first big traction I had, and it was just like, okay. So it's, it's safe to say that Cardi kind of jump-started the career. What do you mean? Like, I feel like, no, because, I mean, even... Though she posted that, I was already doing like my YouTube content, but I didn't blow up on it. And even after that video, I didn't blow up. I hadn't hit like a thousand subscribers on YouTube yet, but it definitely gave me a boost. Like, whoa, like Cardi B. Like okay. I'm, I used to drive to Cardi B listening to her shit in high school. So it was just like, dang, like, okay. And people are actually like, oh, so I'm like, okay. Cause I was doing YouTube already and I stopped cause senior year, applying for colleges, all of that. And I was just, I lost, I was like, into any, like, for real, I was like, okay. And I was like, oh, shit, like, I could do this. Especially after, like, seeing the people actually listen, go subscribe to my channel if y'all want to see a video on my prom dress, where I got it from, who made it, what I did. And it was just like, okay. And then I used to do Kylie. Let me tell you what really, like, made me go crazy, like, I could do this. I used to do um, makeup tutorials, and I would buy Kylie's lip product that she just dropped. And I would try to be the first one, or the woman of color, the first woman of color to review it, because, you know, makeup, shades look different on different skin tones and Kylie used to repost me on um Twitter mm. she posted me on the Kylie Cosmetics page I saw Chris Jenner like my picture I was like oh my god Chris that's Jenner. crazy that's and insane. I'm like okay my face is marketable like you know I could really do this like I really could tap into like this industry or just putting my face out there and so yeah Cardi definitely showed love when she posted that and I went to she had like a couple of hostings in Orlando early on I went to a couple of them, and she was cool. Like, it was just cool vibes and stuff like that. But, yeah, I would say she gave me a spark to, like. So I asked it. that because clearly just watching you, you're a super Nicki Minaj fan. Yeah. But Kari really helped you, like, jumpstart the career of YouTube. No. She helped. She did help, but she helped me jumpstart. But it wasn't the career of YouTube, though. Okay. It just, I don't know. She it, gave me a boost on, like. As far as the engagement and the violence and all that, but it's like, she just did that to post it because I was cute. You so know? if you had to choose between Nikki and Cardi, it would be Nikki for sure. Why are you doing I'm this? I'm asking, who would it be, Nikki or Cardi? Why are you doing this? Because it's fun. I love them both. If you want me to be honest, I really love them both. Like, I love Nicki Minaj. I feel like I hate that social media tries to pin them or they're having beef because they're two completely different. Like, it's one thing about it when you like, I had this situation. You trying to beef with me, bitch, we not even, like, you do what you do, I do what I do. Why are we even competing? Mm -hmm. And it makes me so mad that people try to do this because it's like, no, I love them both. Before Cardi was in the picture, Nikki, always, 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 that's Nikki, 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 Nikki. But I also love Cardi, too. She's a Libra. 
I feel like I love her personality. I love her too. But they're both completely Nicki rap. Mm -hmm. She you know been doing longer push a pin like really into like her music. Cardi even said to herself like I'm just doing this and I'm doing it and this it's lit like you know what I'm saying. So it's like I hate that you put me in predicament to choose because I really couldn't choose. But I've always been a Barb first, mm -hmm. and I will say that. So at the end of the day, I'm gonna be loyal to the Barb because I was a Barb first. But I love them both. They'd make so much more money together, and I know it's probably not going to happen because it's went deeper than probably what we know. But I hate that because even right now with my, you know, where I am now, I'm not even, I only got a million followers yet. They do that with YouTubers. They try to pin you, and the fans will really do that, though. It's like, like I had somebody, oh, this person said something about you. And now, I didn't see the live stream, but she said this about you on live. And it's like, why would somebody come and tell me if she didn't really say it? But now I'm looking at you sideways because like, why would somebody even come in and tell me that? So did you really say something about me? And then it starts making up, and then it turned into something that it wasn't even supposed to. You know what you, I'm saying? You know, it's, it's it's crazy because they do that with the grace. But it's funny. I was I was saying that too because like, the question wasn't really to like put you pin the two together. Right. Together. No. Yeah. It's really just of like a creative mind thought. You know what if I'm it came to like, like creative and like my music i would choose nikki more because mm. i just like her i like her style like you know she's very different like she's very versatile and that's it reminds me of myself because like i could rap a hard record like did it on them but then she'll make a star shit you just feel like, you know what i'm saying just versatile or like a her when she does um her taps into her caribbean side mm. you know I'm Caribbean, you know, Haitian, and just like, I just like the multi personalities that she has going on. And it's just like, you know, it's just different. So I definitely like that for sure. You see yourself, like, you see a lot of yourself in Nikki, I guess. And yes. That's, that's, that's cool. That's and cool. either, again, it could be influenced, but it's just like, I love it. Yeah, ain't But wrong I with love, that. I love them both. And that's the thing. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Shit. Love them both. Ain't nothing wrong. When you drop me your, um, your tape, you say you about to drop. Not dropping a tape yet. I'm dropping my single. Single. When you dropping it? Um, so we have a couple of bad things. On, well, not bad things. A couple of things we're waiting for on the back end for everything to be situated. But I'm hoping by the end of this month. Mm. I wanted to drop it sooner, like uh, July, early, like J July 4th weekend or Memorial Day. It was really supposed to be Memorial Day, but I got sick. And I was, I didn't have COVID. I didn't have the flu. I just had a really bad upper respiratory infection when I got asthma. Well, I have asthma, but it acts up when I'm sick. So... I was in the house for two weeks, lost my appetite, and it kind of like threw off the whole thing because, you know, to do a rollout, I wanted, this is my first single since I dropped in a long time, and I want the rollout to be right. I don't want to just drop. I want marketing to be right, or, you know what I'm saying? I want stuff to be right. So when you say we, it's, some, it's like a couple bad things that we, like, you signed or like? I'm not signed yet. But what, what, who, what's your team looking like? Like I got, I work with different producers. Okay. Um, I got... A couple producers that I'm working with, but I have my manager that's helping me figure out stuff as well. Um, it's really just us. Like right now, I'm building my team. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's new to me. Like, and that's another thing about you were saying when you go to my page, because I'm trying to figure it out by myself. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm praying, you know, I know God is going to bring the right people around me, but really your bitch is just figuring this out on her, on her own. What's the hardest part about that? Like figuring Juggling it out? Juggling everything. Like, especially with today. Like, I planned, every time I come to Atlanta, usually I get a one way because I don't know what's gonna happen. I just come, I just say, okay, I feel like it's time to go. I gotta go back, get back in the field. And with not having like hands on, cause when I leave, I leave by myself. I don't leave with my manager or whatever the case may be. So when I'm out, it's like I'm figuring it out by myself. It's hard, like, especially because, you know, with the single about the rollout, I know, I want to do the rollout a certain way, and I haven't hosted in Atlanta since like February, Marchish. So I was like, okay, I need to get back out because I'm about to do the single. It's time to, you know, get your face out there. You know, be in the clubs. And I tapped in with a lot of DJs since I've been out of LA, but it's like I haven't dropped nothing. So it's like, I feel like everybody's just waiting to hear what I'm doing. But it's hard to juggle everything. Like yesterday, I had a hosting. My boy King Sid came out. Kiana J came out. All my friends came out, Leilani came out. Like A lot of people came out to support me, and it's like, I'm hosting, so I got to be the life of the party. I got to make sure everybody good, everybody this and that, but I have to be at this interview. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I'm doing my own hair and makeup. I have a hairstylist too, but you no, know, I'm 
that's part of the beauty industry. So like I could do it myself if I got to, but it's a lot. No, it is. I gotta keep everybody lit, and my energy is very strong. My friends tell me like my friends could be sitting in a section tired, but all I gotta do is come in like eh, 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 and get everybody up. And the whole energy just changed. And so like my energy holds a lot of weight, and it's hard to because. If I'm throwing off, like, it's Sam, I'm in the club or at a hosting and somebody pissing me off and now my mood is off, that's going to make everybody's mood off. So it's like, I got to be kicking and be the life of the party. And then it's like, oh, my God, I got a time management. And then I got to, it's a lot. It's a lot. So let me ask you this, like, just doing switchover, right? We seen, like you said, Queen Naja um, switch over from YouTube to rap. We seen DDG switch over to the uh, YouTube to rap and, like, selling millions of records doing rap. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, shit, even, like, one of the biggest YouTube stars of Jake Paul and Logan Paul, we even seen them switch over from YouTube to boxing, right? Mm -hmm. And you see so many people um, have so much shit to say about them when they doing it because they don't take them serious. But they've, they've, I feel like they've made a stamp. All three yeah. of those, all four of those people made, yeah, a, stamp, made a, stamp. a real stamp for themselves outside of YouTube. Of YouTube. Because it's, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, yeah, it's definitely one of those things where I, they really did. And it's like, just do what you want. But looking at them though, right? And looking at so many other YouTube stars who try to do it, well, not even others, let's say just say yourself. What do you think the biggest difference is? From what, me and them? Mm-hmm. Cause you, you could do it too, but what, what do you think? When you look at them and you look at yourself or other YouTube stars, what, what do you think the biggest difference is? What do you think is so special about them? Just like shit, Cardi B switched over from uh, reality TV to really a rapper now. Like, what's what's the biggest difference between those who do it and those who try to do it and, and not not successful at it? I feel like because it's really in them. Mm. Mm. Because it's certain people that I've met or been around, and I could tell that you're just in this because you're in it. You got swarmed into it, or you want to do it because you think it's lit, but it's not really in you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I said, it's supposed to not feel like a job. It's supposed to be like something that's natural, that's real, that's organic. And I feel like with those people that you name, it's just in them, whatever spark of whatever, because clearly those people that you manage, I bet you they could be versatile and do a lot of other things as well. Mm. Like we, DG, for example, vlogging, lifestyle, doing this, but then he could probably, in his music video, he's acting, he's rapping, he's melodically singing, or whatever the case may be. Because he just got that in him. You mm. know what I'm saying? I feel like certain people just have certain things in them, and it's like, that's why it's successful. The people I feel like that's not successful is because maybe this wasn't really for you, or it wasn't really in you to do. So it's not, you know what I mean? So like you said, you're so young, right? It's so much growing to do, right? It's shit. I hope you become the biggest rapper ever, the mm -hmm. biggest female rapper, or just, or just rapper, right? Not even putting a title to it mm -hmm. or a prefix on it. Um, you're so young you know you could change your mind at any given time and that's mm -hmm. okay but i'm pretty sure you you know it's in you how do you how like what feeling do you get how do you know that this is it for me it's just a feeling you get like i don't know how to explain it but like just even last night being on the mic and it's just a feeling that i get like but outside then, of the feeling what, what 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 is it though talk to me <sighs> how do you know that that's your purpose See, I'm not even going to lie. I said I like to do a lot of things. Who knows if me rapping for a little bit is going to lead me into my real purpose. Mm -hmm. We don't know if that's the end goal. We don't know what, I don't know what my future holds. Mm. But I know it's going to be part of it because mm. I'm good at it. And I see that, I, I see it. I'm reading comments. People are like, yo, you really like that. Like you, I can see really going far. Like your lyrics help me get through my day and stuff like that. Or like. You make me feel like this when I hear this song. So it's like, again, I don't know if that's going to be the end goal, but maybe it might lead me into wherever else I'm going. Mm. And that's really where I can't really answer your question fully because it's like, it feels good. It feels like this is definitely something I'm supposed to be doing because the feedback and what I'm hearing is, is giving what it's supposed to give. But I don't know if that's going to be the end, the end goal. Because I see myself, like I said, I see myself doing so much. I want to own a plaza one day with all my businesses in it. Uh, who knows where that's going to You know what I'm saying? Like, when you, you might be opening another door. When you this, this, and you put yourself out there, you open it, you get new opportunities swarming that you didn't even think that you would get. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Man, no, I, I, I was, it's my first, one of my first time asking that because, you know, I, um, I talked to somebody 
while ago and I was just saying the difference between your passion and your purpose mm-hmm. right because a lot of times people like to do something but it's really not purpose driven mm. you get what I'm saying so like even like when it comes to this for me it started off as a passion something that I, well not really because I didn't even want to I, I always wanted to be the star to be the honest star. right like oh my god I love that you said that yeah. a star just a yeah. star yeah so like I always wanted to be a star so like when somebody asked me to do interviews and stuff I was like nah I should be getting interviewed. You honestly. should be getting interviewed. Yeah, but as time went on, um, I don't know if you ever had a brand. You named the brand. I'm gonna get to what I was about to say, but I don't know if you ever had a brand. You named it first because it was catchy, and then later on, it it began to have its purpose. For example, um, I have a brand called Honest Royalty. I'm a Q. Uh, I went to school. I became a Q as a fraternity or whatever. Um, and you know, purple is the color of royalty. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I was a four, so my pearl was. I know they're gonna hate me for that, but it was it was a, a honest pearl, or whatever. So like I was like honest royalty, right? So it just made sense for me. As time went on, I understand that I un- that name began to make me have purpose, and the purpose was you know like as long as you stay true, like you don't become a king or a queen, you're born it, right? Mm. But you you grow into that by being yourself, honest with yourself, right? Royalty is being the king and queen. Mm. But I say that to say a lot of times our passion grow into a purpose, and I was wondering if you found a purpose like even with this podcast thing like it, it was something that was cool and I thought I was good at but then I understood mm-hmm. the conversations how it brings people how it brings things out of people that they didn't even know no. you know what I'm saying how how it makes people feel how it makes people look how how it how how a conversation can really change their life life right before I even post this on YouTube or Instagram I, I can understand that the chemistry and the dynamic that I have with a stranger that I haven't mm-hmm. even met you get know what I'm saying so yeah. like that's and that's, that's what's crazy purpose. because it's like that that's just crazy that you say that because it's like, like I told you, I'm a big energy person. And it's like, you know, you're doing this in front of cameras and you really organically tapping into someone. Like that shit can really change mm. someone like outlook on certain st- just sitting here. So for sure. Well, and that's why I was wondering, like, if you found that purpose in music yet. But not if not, it's um, fine, though. It's OK. I feel like I'm really I need to dig deeper. Mm. I definitely feel like I will find it like for sure. But I just. This is the beginning, Mm. the very beginning. Like, I don't think, I don't know, but this is like the very beginning of just a Haitian girl trying to chase her dreams and figure it it out. So it's like, I feel like, and you know, being in LA and being in this YouTube industry, I feel like put me around so much so early, but it's also like, it's, I like it because it's giving me like, okay, you in this, like figure it out, like figure it out. I don't know, I get a rush out of it, like, how am I going to figure this out and really do this? You know what I'm saying? Show people that you could do this. So it's one of those things where, like, this is very early. Like, we're not even nowhere near peak. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, nah, you going you going to do it. And, um, you know, and, and even if, knock on wood, that you don't, but even if you decide to change your mind and do something else, it's okay. You know what I'm saying? It's perfectly fine. And you should take your time with yourself because mm-hmm. that's all that matters. You feel me? I really feel like I'm going to do my shit with the music shit. Though. I'm not and you are. Lie. It's, it's, I'm gonna definitely do it. It's one of those things where I feel like, again, if we don't know, because I say, you know, I don't know what the future holds, but I'm definitely going to make a stamp before I switch over. I'm not going to start something and not do what I need to do. No, Mm-mm. facts. We're going to push through and get that motherfucker out. Get it. For sure. I ain't looking forward to the music, man. Uh, I mean, I guess whenever you drop, let me know so I can share it and all that mm-hmm. shit. You feel me? Uh, is there anything that we didn't touch on that you wanted to touch on? I think we kind of touched on a lot. Did you feel like you got enough tea out of me? I mean, I really wasn't looking for tea. Do you feel like you, how do you feel about it? I think it took a while, but I got you to open up. You know what I'm saying? There's some things that I really wanted to talk about, but. Oh, I got some. Go ahead, go ahead. Another thing that put me in a dark place was a toxic relationship. That's what I said. You talked about that? I said that. I said that's what I thought. Was it a relationship or like a friendship relationship? I said I thought it was a relationship. It was a relationship. It was like an unofficial relationship. It was definitely something that, oh my God. God. Go ahead. I'm interviewing right now. Let me call you as soon as I'm done, okay? All right. Um, it was definitely a relationship, but it was a relationship that I didn't expect. It happened so quick, so fast. The nigga didn't even ask me to be his girl. <laughs> like, it was just like, okay, this is what we're doing. Um, I will say this. Y'all. Y'all. Love yourself first. Don't let no, like, um, that's definitely had a, uh, 
played a part in my mindset and where I was dark. I was in a, that relationship, and this is not to bash who I was with, but because, I, again, I was... But they don't know you don't have to say no names, so it's No, fine. yeah. He... It was one of those things where... <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, this is like, I'm really, I went about this relationship in a different way because again, it was, everything was just happening so fast and I'm like, let me try it this way since I always do it that way. Mm -mm. I rushed into it. I wasn't in a good place mentally. Um, and again, I felt like I wasn't 100% myself and I let a lot of things in the relationship take a toll on me and I, I tolerated a lot. Like it was just certain things that I would never tolerate, or you wouldn't even get a chance. Like what? Um. Like if he called me out my name. Damn. Don't call me a bitch. Mm. They know. So it was a lot of emotional abuse. Yeah. Like on both on both sides though. Like we was both toxic. It wasn't. I'm not, I'm not pointing the finger. Isn't it crazy without pointing the finger? Right. We could we could hold ourselves accountable, but isn't it crazy how the things you ain't see yet. Like how much of how much how many things or how many negative things that could be in you that you didn't know because you wasn't exposed to it yet? And I oh said, my god, yeah, girls always between. Oh, I like toxic relationships. So yeah, that's cute. Ah, no, it's not. Hmm. Ain't shit cute about that shit. How much of that relationship? And we're gonna get to it though. But how much of that relationship showed you how much you had to grow? Because you said y'all both was toxic, and you probably never even seen a toxic side of y yourself. I didn't even know I had the toxic in me because yeah. the. My last nigga, I was, he wasn't bringing that out of me. That's, it was none of that. It was real good. How real much did that relationship teach you about you? But I was a different person in that relationship. I didn't even know who I was in that mm. relationship. Like, you know how people like, I looked in the mirror and didn't recognize myself? Like, that's how it was. Like, damn, like, why was I acting like this? This is not me. Or why was I doing this? Or why was I doing that? I'm a real honest person. Like, if I was lying about something, I don't lie. But I felt like he was figuring me out, and I didn't like it, so I felt like I had to lie. Mm. I, and it was just just certain stuff about me that I was that was I was doing that wasn't me, but it was me in that time period. And it was just like, mm -mm. Mm. and it's like because I really liked him, or I felt bad that I would. I felt like at the time, like you said, you know how when you're hurt or you're going through something, I felt like I unintentionally was putting my hurt on him. I felt bad, so it kind of made me feel guilty to stay. Because it's like, damn, like, while I was going through this, he was there, and, like, he tried to do this. So you got to be there. But really, it's like, this is not right still. Like, mm. you need to get out of this. You, but I felt bad. So how was you able to get out of it? Um, It got to a point where, to be honest, for how toxic we were, I felt like if I did not get out of L.A., I probably would have still been dealing with him. I had to get out the state. Mm. And it wasn't only toxic him with a past friend that I had. I had to get out that toxic, I had to get out. Damn. I had to get out. And then, of course, with the distance over time, me and him finally just. What brought you to that final moment of, I'm leaving? Um, A situation I had with my old friend. Mm. LA, it was a situation that I had there. It was just a lot of little things happening in the house. I lived with a, I had a four bedroom townhouse that, you know, I love so much. But anyway, my best friend was living with me there. And then I was living with my cousin. And then he ended up moving in. So it was just a lot. So there was just a lot going on. Think about that time. Like, how did that, like, looking back on it, how did that make you, make you feel for real? It made me feel good because I felt like we all were going to support each other and really, like, do this, like, you know? But when it didn't go out, go that way you, you, you wanted it to go, how did that make you feel? And how did you deal with that? It made me feel like I wanted to, like, I felt like, Again, I told you it was like I felt like I was had a lot on my back. I had mm. all them on my back, so it was just like I felt overwhelmed. I just was over it. But I'm a fighter. Like I really be trying to fight through shit. But then again, when I'm starting to have certain thoughts, it's not worth it. Did you uh like talk to a therapist about it? Mm -mm. Or? That's one thing I feel like after hearing me admit that I had those thoughts, I feel like some people were like, "Did you talk to a therapist or did you seek help?" And it's like. No, because I don't know, just being around my family and real energy and having my pram family, I feel like was my therapy. Mm. I just need to be back around that genuine real love. People that care about me, love me, want to see me win, seeing my nieces and my nephews, just being around family, like, you know, kind of was my therapy. 
you said like people gotta love themselves. How are how 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 can somebody recognize that they're not loving themselves in a the moment? That they're not loving themselves in a the moment. Um like how if you look back on your situation, what was not loving yourself? Not loving myself was t- letting people take advantage. Like with stuff that just like come on now. Why like this is that. So why so like for example, um one hand wash the other. You know what I'm saying? I'm starting when you're giving more than what you're receiving. Or like you're just draining yourself to make somebody else happy. Like you're making yourself empty. Like you gotta love yourself. You gotta be good. Like, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like you gotta be good. You shouldn't have to question or hesitate doing something or be like, eh. eh. You you if you true and you really good, you got your head on your shoulders and you self love yourself. Yeah, I got you. Nah, it's no bad. Blood. It's no bad blood though. But it's mm-mm. nah for sure. It's um it's crazy because in in every situation you gotta be alright. I know it's funny that we having this conversation because I just had this conversation with uh uh Carlay mm-hmm. and we were just talking about self love and taking care of yourself first. You feel me? Like mm-hmm. I come from a spiritual household as well. My my, my mom used to always say. You gotta love three people before you can love anybody else. That's God, Jesus, and then yourself. Mm-hmm. She used to always say that. And then even like think about, I literally just had the same conversation. Think about going on a plane, right? They always say one thing when they're giving their instruction. They say, before you put, if you have a child, before you put the mask on a child, you gotta put the mask on yourself because you gotta save yourself first. Same with your situation. Before you help anybody else. Yeah, and same, same is with a cup of water. You know what I'm saying? I can't pour from an empty cup, and it sounds so cliche but it's real it's literally like i can't if i don't have anything in me i cannot pour it into you so like i definitely understand what you're saying and sometimes it can get frustrating and hurtful and shit even angry when you're steady having to pour into somebody when you don't even have it in yourself and they steady take take and take like, and they don't give and then it's like okay i've been here for you one thousand million times can you be here for me once it's like what about me and then like what it's like damn it was definitely one of those situations. Like when I needed everybody to be there for me, they wasn't. And it was just like. In what ways was it? Like monetary? Mentally, with going through a toxic relationship. Was you telling people though that she was in a toxic the relationship? The people that lived with me knew. I'm not gonna lie. When you're in a toxic relationship, they said the way you know it's toxic is that you keep it away from your family. Cause you know your family or you know people closest to you are gonna be like, no, like. Whereas a friend like me, if my friend's going through something toxic, right? I'm going to listen to her. I'm going to give her my advice. But unless that man is beating her or putting his hands on her, I'm not going to tell her to leave her man because mm. that's not my place. I'll be here for you to come cry on me. It's okay. We could cry. We could watch movies all day or do whatever. I hope you get your mind off of it. But I'm not going to tell you leave your man mm. unless if you love him. I can't. But, for example, me, I'm going through a toxic situation. I need you to be there for me for all, through this toxicness, even though, She's probably fed up with him. I'm not. Or just help me get there. You know what I'm saying? Just be there for me. You know. And that's just letting you cry on that shoulders? Like when you say be there, how would somebody be there? Yeah, just let me cry on your shoulder. Or just let me talk about it. Maybe just hearing myself talk about it to you will make me realize. But if I'm not talking to you about it or I'm keeping it away from my family because I know my sister going to be like, "Mm mm-mm. And it's like, I don't want to hear mm-mm. I just want you to listen to me. Mm -hmm. Um, It was definitely one of those things where it's just like, I felt like it was how I was feeling about it was all trapped inside, so I wasn't really able to express. Because sometimes I'll ask you, like, hey, what do you think I should wear today? These blue shoes or the purple shoes? And then you'll be like, I think you should wear And I'll cut you off like, oh, wait, the purple shoes. Because just talking out loud is helping me kind of just put it out there. And then, okay, I got it. All right, I know what I should go with now. Just to hear myself out loud. Mm, So you feel like the people wasn't being there for you because they wasn't just letting you talk, vent to them? Yeah, I feel like certain people was just, they wouldn't let me really express myself how would that look like you would try to express yourself and they would say no or like i don't want to hear it like um because i'm assuming if you were around them they were some people people that cared for you at one point in time so how did how did it change certain stuff started to get repetitive like what like for you or for them um overall like a toxic relationship that means it's toxic you're doing back and forth stuff all the time so it's like oh my god but how wasn't the people Around, the people around you, how wasn't they there for you? Um, what? A, so really, like I said, I, I kept my my family. My cousin stayed with me, um, and her boyfriend. 
I let her stay with me. I was living with my old friend, me, and then the dude I was dealing with. So it was like my cousin minded her business unless I came to her. Mm. But then me and my cousin, that's my co- since we was kids, we was growing up together. But as we got older, like in high school, we kind of like drifted. Like when we was getting, when we was growing up, our, our moms would make us match and this, this, and that. But as we got older, I like makeup, I like all this glitz and glam, and she's just more simple. She don't really like that. She, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, when we moved in together, we hadn't had like a real strong relationship for years because we kind of grew apart. But that's always family, so I'm gonna look out. So she just minded her business. So it was just like, it was weird trying to talk to her about it, so I didn't speak to her about it. But my old friend tried to speak to her about it, and it was just like, it wasn't giving the same I give you, so I just stopped. Mm. Did you express that? Yeah. And it just was like, I can't, damn. Mm-mm. It is what it is. One of, it's one of those things where like, you live and you learn. That was a situation where I knew her for a long time but you know you outgrow people no for sure too you know what i'm saying you just and that's why it's important to love yourself because once you love yourself once you learn how to love yourself you're able to have those not conversations with yourself but you're able to seek counsel and, and where counsel need to be seek mm-hmm. right and sometimes that friend might not be the person that you seek counsel from sometimes it might be a therapist yeah, you start to learn that certain friends is good for certain stuff mm. I, and i and i learned that too and i'm like i said i'm only 23 and I feel like I learned a lot early. Like I'm learning even now too. Like it's certain friends for certain stuff. I know I'm gonna call this friend when I need this. I'm gonna call this friend when I feel like boohoo crying. I'm gonna call this friend when I want to do. You definitely learn certain people are meant to be in your life for different things. For sure. Nah, it was good. It was good talking to you. I'm pretty good at the uh, the the little research. Like I said 24. You turn 24 in October. Mm-hmm. I said 24, right? Look at you. Crazy, what you saw that? What did you say? I that? didn't. I, I just, thought they had my birthday wrong. No, I just did. I don't. know. I did some numbers. I I don't know. I went back. I, I you said your age at one time. I did the. And you did the math. You yeah. did. Look at you. You did your thing. I'm not gonna lie. I was like, okay. <laughs> yes, I didn't think you was gonna know what that. Yeah, I got you. But you know it mean? was a, it was a good conversation. Like I said, it took some time to get it out you, but I'm glad we did, man. Yeah. I think um you were definitely vulnerable and um people won't see that. You know yeah, I feel like, appreciate that. and I feel like that's why I really wanted to do this interview with you too. Because again, I know there's a gray area. I don't really talk about stuff, but I will talk about it in music. Mm. You're gonna hear it, like I said, you're gonna hear songs where I'm talking about how uh, I'm heartbroke or where I'm talking shit. Like you're just, you're just gonna hear it. Like in my music, you're gonna have like hot girl summer songs or club bangers, but you're gonna hear when I'm talking about when I'm in my feelings or what I went through and stuff like that. Honestly, I want to show you. Yeah, a I couple hear. real quick. Yeah, I want to. I want to know a question. Did you um? Did you get over that relationship? Like, really? Like, are you over it? I'm over it. I'm definitely over it now. I'm a closure person though. Mm. Like, a, a, any man or friend that I dealt with, like in the past, like all my exes, I could call them and be cool and laugh and kiki. Okay. But this specific one, I don't think we could ever do that. And I don't like that because I'm a closure person. I like whether we gonna be cool or not. As long as you know, this is what was this. This is what was that. No confusion. You know why I felt this way. I know why you felt that way. We agree to disagree. You go your own way. You go. I go my own way. But certain things I saw this post the other day is certain relationships you fight for. Certain stuff you just got to let go. But you got to know which ones to, are the right ones to fight for and the wrong ones to fight for. It's crazy because I'm like that kind of. I don't really care about closure. Now I'm, but le- now I'm learning. It's not even worth it. Yeah. What, was, what, what I would say about me is I hate being a villain. Right. And I'm learning that. It's okay to be the villain. You're going to be the villain in somebody's mm-hmm. story. And that's you okay. always going to be the bad guy. It's okay. Let's get to this music. Okay. Wanna, um, we can wrap it up. You want to tell people how to follow you and stuff like that? I want you to listen to it real quick. Oh, on here. Real okay, quick. come on. Yes. I don't know if I'm going to get a copyright claim. You no, know. I'm going to do it quick. And you could chop it up and just do like 10 seconds. Like, literally, you won't get chopped. Like, right. just chop it up. I want to get your raw reaction on camera. So. My raw reaction? How's she going? How are you going to do that to me? Oh, you just put me on the spot so I can put you yeah, on the go spot? Ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Shoot, right. we did a lot of different. We ate, we did, we did. Yeah, we, we tapping we in. Now. Shots, yeah. So you finna... Okay, let me see what I want to. Okay, so this one is my most recent record I did, and this one's like something I would put on a tape. Like I want people to know who I am or what. Anyway, play it. What um sample was that? Is that a sample? Yeah, it's a sample, but it was like a producer that just. Made a okay, keep going, keep going. Always gotta be right, gotta be the big woman. Always gotta make the right decisions when I shouldn't. He tried to say that he could keep it beat, but he couldn't. 
<laughs> when the last time you made some music? 2021? Was, Before this? Oh, like my last drop? Yeah. 2018? I thought you did something in 21. The freestyle you had in a booth. You had this single. You had this something out. I've been doing remixes, but this is an original. So when the last time you did a remix? Last time I did a remix? Like the most recent remix? Yeah. Like last week. You posted it? Yes, I did an FNF remix. And yeah, I heard that. Yeah, uh, Plan agree. B. Um, this sounds so. When did you do this? Like two weeks ago. So F, you did FNF after this. FNF was record bef- recorded before this, but I dropped it. But after. I can, so I can, what? I can hit, like how long before? How long before what? That you recorded FNF in this. FNF, that was recorded around the same time. It was a weekend I was here. I recorded FNF first, and then. I waited my next session and then I recorded this. It sounds so different, so much different. It's, it sounds like you grew in like that small and time, but go ahead. Really? Yeah, go ahead. Because you know why, though? I feel like with FNF, I gave off Glow's, vi- glow's vibe. Like, I really fucked with her vibe. It's a big, big glow. So I kind of gave that vibe, mm-hmm. but that's not my type of flow or vibe. But I like to do remixes and freestyles because it takes me out of my comfort zone and makes me tap into a different artist's world. But in my own... Music, I come off okay. in a different. Okay. Oh, yeah, you reviewing my music. Okay. Yeah. It sounds like the rapping is giving me an artist. I can't, I can't think You can't of. think yet? It's like a, uh, it's not Remy Ma, but it's giving me like. um. Fo- people say Foxy sometimes. Foxy, okay. I'm going to show you another record, but so they usually say that. Okay, let me, let me see. Okay. This one. Right here. You heard the remixes? F and F. You didn't hear Plan? plan, the plan? I think I, that has like a pink cover art on it. Yellow. Plan Plan B. I heard that. You heard it? Mm-hmm. The whole thing? Not the, I heard, I heard most of it though. Okay. So you already heard that. I don't want to play you something you already heard. You want to hear recent? See, that cut off, I think. How you know? Because the red light? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Probably memory card is fine though. Oh, I'm taking all your footage. I'm sorry, not sorry. That's cool. You good. <laughs> you, yeah, he's fine. Okay, no more. Go ahead. So you're gonna hear this is a different vibe. Shout out to Jay and Cut. He produced this. But he niggas got my own bag. And if he fucking with me, Drake, best he ever had. Just a little different vibe. No, it's a vibe. It's a vibe. It's a vibe. Different vibes. You know, I got a few more, but I'm not going to leave too no, much. I'll like probably like send you a couple Good things. Shit. Good shit. What prom? Um, yeah, Who prom? Boosie? It's Boosie, right? It's Boosie, Boosie prom? You, how you getting that? You ain't tell me. They told me about that, too. I'm going to go and do another. Yeah. I know that's uh, right. I got. I heard about that. So, um, but nah, man. Uh, Abby yeah. Nicole. Yeah. For the people that don't know, everybody know. Um, how know. to follow you? Oh, follow me on Instagram, Abby Nicole, and on Instagram, I got a link tree in there. You can find all the other links, my songs, my remixes on SoundCloud, YouTube, all that. Look out for your girl. I got some new songs dropping. I got a record called Chestnut Checkers. Shot the music video in New York on my cousin's block. Tapped into, you know, the roots Back a little home. bit. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Y'all look out. And yeah, shout out to Jay Hill for having me, even though I was mad late. It's all good. It's all love. Appreciate all it. Right. Great conversation. Abby Nicole, everybody. Mr. Jay Hill was a rap.